And in previous lectures, we have seen some examples of a deterministic finite automata. In this lecture, we're going to see more examples of deterministic finite automata. And also, we will uh, present the concept or the mathematical uh, definition of a finite automata. Uh, how we define a finite automaton uh, mathematics. Okay, so let's give another example. Let's look at this language, L, the set of strings W, such that uh, W has a multiple of three ones, or let's say one. W such that W has a multiple of three ones. So we would like the number of ones in a string to be a multiple of three. So the number of ones should be zero, three, six, nine, etc. Now does this language have a finite number of strings or an infinite number of strings? Infinite. It has an infinite number of strings. By the way, sigma is our default alphabet, uh, zero, one. In fact, we will see an example today in which the alphabet is not this. We're going to extend the alphabet in one of the examples that we will be going through today. Okay, so the number of ones in this string should be 0, 3, 6, 9. Uh, okay. Now, how do you think we can write, how we can uh, uh, design a DFA for this, to recognize this language? How many states do you think it will have? Yes. Three? Yes, why three? <coughs> um, one for the accept and two others for the first one and the second one. The first one and the second one. Like multiples of. But what about, you know, cases where we have nine and twelve? And it'll go back to the first one. Three hundred and thirty-three. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it will go back. Yeah, it will go back. It's going to go back, definitely. There will be a cycle in this. Definitely. This uh, DFA is going to have a cycle in it. Yes. Do the threes have to be consecutive, or uh, just as long as there's multiples of three? Okay, good question. We didn't say consecutive, so it's just the number of ones in that string should be a multiple of three. So if you have this, for example, zero one zero one zero one, this is accept. Okay. Okay. So this is the question. Yeah, it's, it's important to understand the language before we, we try to uh, find the DFA to recognize it. So what do you think the, the three states would be? You know, try to think more abstractly here. Uh, what should, yeah? Maybe uh, the first one, it starts and it has a loop. So if it has a zero, it loops. If it has a one, it proceeds. The next one it has a zero, it loops. When it proceeds and a zero, it loops. Okay. And one, it finishes. That's true. With the zero, we loop because the zero does not change the state. We're only counting ones. So we definitely expect to see a loop on zeros, and we definitely expect the one to make to advance to the next state. But why three? Why three states? Because of the requirement of three. Because we, unless <laughs> we can have a counter, that's our way of counting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we should count. So let's see. Let's try. Let's start. Let's get started first. So this is our Q0, it means that nothing has been seen yet, or all what we have seen so far are zeros. Okay. Then if we get a one, we advance to state Q1. And of course, if we get a zero, we stay where we are because we are counting ones, we don't care about zeros. Zero doesn't change the state. Then if we get another one, then now we have three ones. Well, now we have two ones. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now we have two ones, and this is state Q2. Now what should we do if we get a third one? Go back to Q0. Q0. Yeah, exactly. This is the key idea. So we go back to, uh, to Q0. But now we have a multiple of three. So if you have you know, three ones, you go back to Q0. If you have six ones, you will do this cycle twice. If you have nine ones, you will Traverse this cycle three times. Okay. So, which state should be the accept state? Q0. Q0 is the accept state. Now, what's missing to make it a DFA? 
Yes, zero on Q2. Yes. Okay, so now, yeah, so this is not a, not a very complicated uh, DFA, but, uh, you know, this concept is important here. Uh, let's now try to write the, a description for each state. What does Q0? What does Q0 represent in this case? We get multiple It's our start. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, it's in fact, it, it's the also state in which we have the property that we're looking for. So the number of ones that has been seen is a multiple of three. So the number of ones seen is a multiple or of three. But what should be the description of Q1? By the way, a multiple of 3 and 0 is a multiple of 3. So the number of ones seen could be 0. 0 is a multiple of 3. Again, remember, 0 is an even number. It's a multiple of 2 and it's also a multiple of any other integer. So 0 is a multiple of uh, 3 or any integer. any positive integers. Okay, so now what, what, how would you describe Q1? Uh, Q1 is one more than a multiple of three. Okay, Q1, okay, the number of ones is one more than a multiple of three. Yeah. And how would you, uh, what's the mathematical, uh, a more mathematical uh, way of uh, stating this? Yes? It's, um, 3n plus 1, where n is 0 or positive? Okay, 3n plus 1, yeah. So the number of 1s is 3n plus 1, which means the number of 1s is, is 1 mod 3, modulo 3. So this is modulo arithmetic, right? So the number of 1s seen is 1 mod 3. In fact, I can change the first state 0 to 0 mod 3. So this is 0 mod 3, this is 1 mod 3, and clearly Q2 is what? Two. Yeah, the number of ones seen is 2 mod 3, or modulo 3. Okay? All right. Any questions on this example? Okay, so let's now introduce the, uh, the formal description of an, a DFA or the mathematical description of a DFA. A DFA mathematically is viewed as a five tuple that has a set of states, an alphabet, a transition function, a start state, and a set of final states. In fact, so far we haven't seen a, a DFA with multiple final states or multiple accept states, but we will see one in a bit. Okay, so now uh, a DFA, deterministic finite automaton, is a five tuple. Q, sigma, delta, uh, E zero, and F. Sorry, this is a tuple, not a set. <laughs> okay. Where Q is a finite set of states, sigma is a finite set of what? What, what did we call them when we defined them? Uh, character is the computer science symbols. symbols yeah. So the more uh, theory of computation term is the right theory of computation term is symbols. A 
finite set of symbols, delta, which is a function, you know, each function has a range and a domain. Domain and a range. So now what's, what's the domain and what's the range of this function? So this function, the, the transition function in finite automata, maps what to what? So you can think of it mathematically, or you can think of it, think of it from a programming point. Since you know, this is a computer science class. If uh, it, a transition function, what does it take as input, and what does it give you as output? Data. Okay. All functions take data. Yes. The current state and the in the next symbol. That's the input, yeah, exactly. The input is the current state and the next symbol, and the output is? Um, the next state. Exactly. Yeah. So it takes a state and a symbol, a state and a symbol as input, and it gives you the next state, another state as output. So it's going to be from Q cross sigma, Q, set of states, and this is set of symbols to Q, is the transition function. Okay, and Q0, which must belong to what? Q0 must belong to the set of states Q, is the start state and f now f in general a dfa can have multiple accept states multiple final states so this f is a set of final states so f <coughs> So what should then be the mathematical relation between F and Q? F can be multiple, a DFA can have multiple accept states, and F is the set of all accept states. Now what should be the mathematical relation between F and Q? Yeah, you're, yeah it's, you're right, it's a subset. Yeah. So F is a subset of Q. So is F is a subset of Q. Okay. And is the set of final or accept. Things. Now let's apply it to this DFA. So for this DFA, Q is, for this DFA, Q is the set Q0, Q1, and Q2. Q0, Q1, and Q2. Sigma, of course, is sigma is 0, 1. Now delta, we should either give a, a, a formula for delta, or you know, just you know, specify, you can uh, when the number of transitions is limited, you can just give all transitions. So you can just say, you know, delta of u0 and 0 equals what? What's delta of q0 and 0? u0. You have q0 and you get a 0, you stay in q0. Delta of q0 and 1 is q1. Yeah, q1. Delta of Q1 uh, and 0. It's Q1. Yeah, Q1. 
delta of q1 and 1 is q2. q2. Delta of q2 and 0. What's delta of q2 and 0? q2. q2. Uh, q2. Oh, we, uh, yeah, q2. And delta of q2 and 1 is? So now we have enumerated all uh, six transitions. We have six transitions. So we define the function here by specifying the transition for every possible uh, input or for every possible argument. Now, how can we just define this more in a more concise and in a more uh, algebraic? So if we say Q delta of, uh, delta of Q, or maybe I should write it, um, I just need more space. Um, okay, I will write it here. Delta of, I can say delta of qi and 0 equals what? qi. QI. Delta of qi and 1 is Q? Ui plus 1. Not true. Almost true. It's not necessary. Oh, no, yeah, it's a Q2. <coughs> so, how do we express this mathematically? Uh, mod? Yeah, i plus 1 mod 3. So, it's Qk, where k equals i plus 1 mod 3. Right? Oh, okay. Does anyone disagree? Okay. So, delta of qi and 1 is qk, where k is i plus 1 mod 3. So, for every, for every i, it's going to be i plus 1, except for uh, when i is 2, so 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 mod 3 is 0. So it goes back to 0. Okay. So can we make it even more <coughs> concise? Yeah. How? Can you write one rule? If you think of the symbol as a number, you can add it to i. Yeah, yeah exactly. So if you think of this as a number, so you can say, uh, okay, I can, let me erase this then. You can say, put it in one rule. Delta of qi and j is qk. And this rule also applies you know, if any j. So it's k equals i plus j mod 3. So when j is 0, just i plus 0 stays i. Right? So this is the most concise way of expressing the transition function for this uh, finite automaton. So in this course, you know, you are expected to be able to handle this uh, level of abstraction. Okay, so, uh, you know, you're expected to be able to, uh, uh, you know, handle this uh, mathematical um, way of expressing or representing finite automata and representing the transition function of a finite automata. Uh, now we specified sigma Q and Q0 is Q0, the start state. What is F for this finite automata? 
So F is the set that includes Q0. Because this is the only accept state. But, okay? <clears throat> F is the set of states including Q0. Now, okay, any questions on this?